click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Now that we have learned how to share and create visualizations, let's discuss how we can share our insights through data storytelling. It lets you combine reporting, presentation, and exploratory analysis techniques to create and collaborate. Data storytelling provides a way of sharing your data analysis and insights using snippets of your visualization in slides. Using these slides, you can turn your data discoveries into a story. Stories are found in the third tab of the app overview. Each story is connected to its respective app, allowing you to return to the live data anytime you need to. A story slide slash page is made up of snapshots, which are graphical representations of the state, type, and data of a data object at a certain point in time. The snapshot you take is a copy of the state. Let's look at how we can create a story from this customer dashboard. The data set used was a single table with a list of customers that preferred game, expected next visit, expected worth, and patron type. Currently, the dashboard is composed of a bar graph limited to the top 10 customers, a tree map, which has the count of customers per game preferences, a pie chart for the type of players, and a vertical bar graph that has year and month data on its x-axis to show the expected dates that the customers will visit the casino again. To create a new story, navigate to the Storytelling tab under Narrate. It presents you with a blank slide, which will serve as the first slide of the story. To rename it, click on the drop-down of the My New Story button and click the Information button of My New Story, then click on the Edit button. In the Edit mode, you can rename as well as add a description of the story. Let's rename this to Customer Analysis and leave the description blank. Then click on the Check button to exit the Edit mode. We need to get snapshots from our dashboard as the first step in creating our story. Navigate to the Sheet view to get back to the dashboard. Let's take a snapshot of the current top 10 customers by hovering over the bar chart until additional options buttons are seen in the top right. Click on the camera button to take a snapshot. Upon doing so, we have the option to set an annotation name. Let's type in Top 10 Customers 2020 and click Save. This snapshot will then be stored and can be inserted into the story at a later time. Go back to our storytelling view to see the snapshot. The panel on the right contains the objects that we can add to a story. To view the snapshot we took earlier, click on the camera button to view the snapshot library. This shows the list of snapshots made, grouped by the time taken. We can also delete the snapshots by clicking the Edit button, selecting a snapshot, and clicking the Delete button. You can also rename the snapshot annotation in this view. To insert the snapshot of the top 10 customers, exit the Edit mode and drag the snapshot into the slide. An object currently selected will have an orange outline on its border with four dots in each corner. To edit the size of the snapshot, Drag on one of the orange dots in the corners and resize it according to your needs. The grids will appear while you are moving and resizing objects to serve as a guide in positioning and sizing. Each snapshot will have additional options on the upper right when they are selected. The buttons are for replacing, editing, and lock unlocking the object. To replace a snapshot, Use the white camera button to open the snapshot list and choose the replacement. The pencil icon is for editing the object itself. Clicking it will show a new window with options on showing or hiding the labels used in the chart. You might opt to remove some of the labels if you are showing the story to a general audience or keep it if your users are more technical and need detailed views. Let's hide the title, then set the grid spacing to no lines and set the y-axis label to labels only, then click done. Finally, we have the locking option. A lock snapshot will have the aspect ratio locked and it will adjust to the size when we drag the orange dot to a minimum. Unlocking it will let you freely change the size ratio of the snapshot 
but do keep in mind that this may hide labels since it has a responsive design to fit the size. Now let's add a text to give context to our slide. Click on the A icon for text objects and choose from either a title or paragraph text. Titles will always have a bigger font compared to paragraphs, but you can adjust its size when necessary. Drag a title to the top of our slide. Double click inside its rectangle to edit the title text. Type in top 10 patrons based on forecasted worth. Highlight the text to enable the text editing options. Let's change the font color to a darker teal blue to fit the ClickSense Breeze theme. Then set the text to bold. Click the Edit button again to exit the text editing mode. Next, let's add a paragraph text to explain the parameters used. Click on the text icon and drag a paragraph into the slide. Let's place it on the white space beside our bar graph. Double click on the text box and type in the parameters used for forecasting worth are the following. Frequency of visit, amount of loss, amount of cash in, and services availed. Highlight the full text and set the size to large. Notice that ClickSense did not set a specific font number, but the options were only based on relative size. This is done to maintain the responsive design of the layout. Now that we have our first page, let's add a second one. Click on the plus button below the slide's thumbnail on the left panel. This will create a new slide after the first one. We can always arrange the slides according to our liking by dragging the slide thumbnail to our desired order. Let's use a new snapshot for our second slide. Navigate to the sheet view and take a snapshot of the tree view. Let's set the annotation name to Tree Map of Preferred Game. Then take a snapshot of the pie graph and name the annotation as Player Type Percentage. Once done, we go back to our storytelling view. Insert the pie graph into the sheet by going to the snapshot library and dragging the Player Type Percentage into our slide. Our patron cluster has three different types, Casual, Regular, and MVP. For this slide, we wanted to emphasize that casual players compose 89.5% of our player base. In order to accentuate a certain part of the graph, the storytelling function has an effects filter for making certain values stand out. Navigate to the wand icon on the right panel and click it to view the effects library. We have three options for the effect. We can either highlight the highest value, the lowest value, or any specific value in the chart. Since we wanted to emphasize the 89.5%, which is the highest percentage, we will choose the highest value and drag the effect into our pie chart. Upon doing so, the effect changed the chart's color, accentuating the highest value and making the rest of the values muted. It has also hidden the rest of the value labels aside from the value of 89.5%. Let's supplement this effect by adding a text of recommendation. Drag a paragraph text box into the slide on the left side of the chart. Then type in almost all of our player base are classified as casual players. Let's try to plan a campaign to convert them to regulars. Next, insert our tree map of preferred game snapshots into the lower right of our slide. Our tree map shows that a significant amount of customers prefer playing varied games of ETG slots and tables, and only a few would focus on only one type of game. But we can't just easily add an effect to this tree map because it is not applicable to this visualization. In this instance, we can use shapes from the shapes library to emphasize a section of our tree map. Click on the shapes icon of the right panel and drag a right callout into the lower left of our slide, with the pointer turning to the 3.54K section of ETG slots and tables. Since this is a shape, a part of it is hidden by the chart. To adjust its position, right-click on the shape and select Bring Forward. Next, adjust the color to a light gray by selecting the object and using the color drop-down in the upper right. Then, add a paragraph text and fit it inside our callout. Type in, we can use a discounted cash and promo to be used in a varied amount of ETG slot and table games if they regularly visit and avail our loyalty membership card. 
and set this text as medium in size and center aligned. Let's add in a third slide by clicking the plus button, then go back to the sheet view and take a snapshot of the vertical bar graph. Type expected month of next visit as the annotation. Once done, navigate back to the storytelling view to proceed working on the third slide. Drag the expected month of next visit bar graph into the lower center of the slide. For this graph, we wanted to emphasize that a substantial amount of customers is expected to come more often as the fourth quarter of the year arrives and then significantly drop off after the holidays. Since the October 2020 bar is not the highest nor the lowest of the values, we will use the Any Value option of the Effects Library. Drag an Any Value effect into the bar graph. On the Objects Action menu, we can set the specific value to highlight by clicking the white wand icon and selecting the value of 2020-October. This will accentuate the value and pin the label on top. Add in a paragraph text on top and type, Customers Expected Visits starts increasing significantly in October. We can start the campaign in this month to maximize the influx of customers. Highlight the word October and set it to bold, with the whole size of the text to large. We can also insert a hyperlink to the text by highlighting a certain phrase or the whole sentence and clicking the hyperlink button on the text editing options. We can either link it to a website or a bookmark on our dashboard. Click on Bookmark and select the general page bookmark. This will link us to the first sheet of our dashboard when we preview the story later on. As a last slide, we are going to insert a live data sheet to the slide. Live data sheets are copies of the original sheet from our sheet view that we, that we can filter on while presenting. To add one, click on the sheet icon on the right panel of the storytelling view. This will show a new window where we can select the sheet to insert. Let's select the detail sheet. Upon doing so, we can then select if it's going to be left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned on the slide. Let's select left aligned to give us some space on the right for the company logo and text. To insert an image, click on the image icon and view the media library. Let's use the top spin logo and click on the plus button to insert it to the slide. Let's adjust the size to fit the space and move it on top using the keyboard's arrow up key. Finally, add the title text customer details to finish our story. To preview the story, navigate back to the first slide and click on the green play button in the upper left. The slides will occupy the full window with the three dots icon on the bottom to help you navigate the page and an X button in the upper right to close the story preview. Hovering on the charts will reveal the tooltip to show additional information. You can also click right on the chart itself to show the go to source option. When clicked, it will open the sheet that contains the click chart in a new tab, wherein the selected chart is highlighted with a blue border for a few seconds. Do keep in mind that the accessibility will always be restricted based on the user's own access rights. To navigate to the next page of the slide, press the arrow right on your keyboard or click the three dots icon on the bottom and click on the arrow right. Text with hyperlinks will be in light view, which is clickable. It will open the link or bookmark on the same tab when clicked. Finally, we have the live data sheet. It is interactable, so you can select a certain value or dimension to filter the sheet. If you wish to clear the filters or selection, click on Reset Selections. You can also click on the Go to Sheet button to go to the original sheet. The prior selections you have made will also be used on the original sheet. Each story has an export function. It can be seen from the three dots icon or from the global menu. A user can export to PDF and PowerPoint. To create a new story, navigate to the Storytelling tab under Narrate. It presents you with a blank slide, which will serve as the first slide of the story. Navigate to the Sheet view to get back to the dashboard. Let's take a snapshot of the current top 10 customers by hovering over the bar chart 
until additional options buttons are seen in the top right. Click on the camera button to take a snapshot. Upon doing so, we have the option to set an annotation name. Let's type in Top 10 Customers 2020 and click Save. This snapshot will then be stored and can be inserted into the story at a later time. Go back to our storytelling view to see the snapshot. The panel on the right contains the objects that we can add to a story. To view the snapshot we took earlier, click on the camera button to view the snapshot library. This shows the list of snapshots made, grouped by the time taken. To insert the snapshot of the top 10 customers, exit the edit mode and drag the snapshot into the slide. An object currently selected will have an orange outline on its border with four dots in each corner. Now that we have our first page, let's add a second one. Click on the plus button below the slide's thumbnail on the left panel. Let's use a new snapshot for our second slide. Navigate to the sheet view and take a snapshot of the tree view. Let's set the annotation name to tree map of preferred game. Then take a snapshot of the pie graph and name the annotation as player type percentage. Once done, we go back to our storytelling view. Insert the pie graph into the sheet by going to the snapshot library and dragging the player type percentage into our slide. Let's add in a third slide by clicking the plus button, then go back to the sheet view and take a snapshot of the vertical bar graph, type expected month of next visit as the annotation. Once done, navigate back to the storytelling view to proceed working on the third slide. Drag the expected month of next visit bar graph into the lower center of the slide. As a last slide, we are going to insert a live data sheet to the slide. To add one, click on the sheet icon on the right panel of the storytelling view. This will show a new window where we can select the sheet to insert. Let's select the detail sheet. To preview the story, navigate back to the first slide and click on the green play button in the upper left. The slides will occupy the full window with the three dots icon on the bottom to help you navigate the page and an X button in the upper right to close the story preview. Hovering on the charts will reveal the tooltip to show additional information. You can also click right on the chart itself to show the go to source option. Press the arrow right on your keyboard or click the three dots icon on the bottom and click on the arrow right. Finally, we have the live data sheet. It is interactable, so you can select a certain value or dimension to filter the sheet. Each story has an export function. It can be seen from the three dots icon or from the global menu. A user can export to PDF and PowerPoint. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.